morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the hour when you're watching this and also depending on where you are watching us from. Uh, we are here to bring to you the Beholders chat and uh, I'm excited again to be part of your life, to be part of your conversation this day and uh, to bring this conver conversation right where you are. My name is Ben Fetcher and I am so blessed uh, living the great life, the higher life that is in Christ Jesus, having been justified by faith, having been made whole in Christ, having been saved by grace through faith. And now I live, and it's not I that live it, it is Christ that lives in me. Hallelujah. And uh, as usual, in our Beholders chat, uh, we are not, I am not alone. I am with my brother, uh, Freddy. Sky blessing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sandy Sana. Yes. Uh, and uh, before I give him a chance to say hi to you, I want us first to pray so that we can begin our conversation. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you this day. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your glory and your grace that is at work in our lives. We thank you for your wisdom. Thank you, Lord, even as we begin this show. We thank you that we are blessed in Christ. We thank you for everything that we share in this place. Let it be of benefit to, to our viewers and to our listeners today. And, my God, I thank you that the gospel will continually be preached in these days and even in the days to come, as men will be established in the knowledge of Christ. I thank you, Lord, that as we continue, revelation will flow freely and our lives will be transformed, even as our minds are renewed by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. And amen. amen. So, my brother Freddy. Yes, sir. Karibu sana. Thank you. You can have an opportunity to say hi to our viewers tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Praise the Lord. Amen. My name is Freddy Sky Blessing, and I'm blessed to be here. Good Thank sir. you, sir. What, where did you get that name? Sky Blessing. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think it's your mama who gives you that. <laughs> Let me not answer that today. <laughs> Most especially the name Sky. <laughs> All I know is a good name. Yeah. That's yeah. Blessing. Amen. It's my nature. <laughs> <laughs> That's my weakness. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, our viewers, like you know, in our last episode, that is uh, last week, we were talking about the another gospel, yeah. which is not yeah. another. Yeah, <laughs> sure. And someone uh, was telling me that uh, that that sounds interesting. We can have another gospel. Mm -hmm. We call it, it's not another. another. But uh, <laughs> that was not our own making. This is your yeah. yeah. It is in the book of Galatians. Maybe we can uh, go there so that we can start our conversation again from there and uh, pick it up from where we left last week. We go to the book of Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. I will be reading from the New King James Version. Galatians. Galatians. If you're looking for Galatians, I want to help you. It is somewhere between Genesis and Revelation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Am I wrong? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, Galatians is between Genesis and Revelation. Revelation. <laughs> so we are in Genesis. Uh, sorry. Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6. Actually, I like I like the title of my Bible. It says only one gospel. That is the wow. title or the, the subtopic of that part of the scriptures. And uh, verse 6 says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. You hear? This is what we are saying. Yeah. We are not the, the originators of that statement. There is a, a different gospel, which is not another. another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. That's serious. Serious, serious. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. So we see that uh, Paul is pronouncing a double curse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's saying in verse 8, 
even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you. So uh, is it interesting that Paul is saying it's true we have preached to you the gospel, yeah. but if we change our minds and come and preach to you another gospel that mm-hmm. is different to what we've, been, we've preached to you or even an angel mm-hmm. preaches another gospel, <laughs> let him be a cast. Then verse 9, he repeats, as we have said before. So now I say again, if no one preaches any other gospel to you, then what you have received, let him be a cast. That's serious. That is very serious. Very serious. So, uh, looking at this statement, these verses 6, 7, 8, and 9, the first thing is that Paul is marveling that you are turning mm-hmm. away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different So, it's like Paul is saying, and this is where we left last time, that the gospel, I think we talked about this, Mm -hmm. that the gospel is the grace of Christ. But there are some people who hear the grace of Christ and they feel like, no. (laughs) 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 Because why do people misunderstand grace and they want to preach something else? Mm -hmm. Why? What do you think? People misunderstand it because... They want to be involved in, in, in the gospel. They want to see themselves doing. Mm. So if they, are, they have been excluded, they can't believe it. Okay. I think they feel good when they are performing something or they are, they are like we say, they are perfecting God, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, yeah. You know, I saw a verse in Job. I can't remember where. Uh, and it says that uh, uh, it is possible for a man to justify himself Mm -hmm. and condemn God. (laughs) (laughs) There are so many many people who want to justify themselves and condemn God. God comes and says that he has given us salvation freely. Mm -hmm. Then you say, no, as you're uh, you're putting it, there is that urge in the hearts of men, like, I want to do something. Mm -hmm. I want to be part of this. What can I do? <laughs> so, God says it's free. You come with your own tools. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you've, been, you've been invited to receive, but you come with your own tools. Like, you want to be part of the, the workers. Mm-hmm, yeah. You want to be part of the workers. So, you are justifying yourself mm-hmm. by what you are doing. And, and doing what? And uh, condemning God. Because God has given you freedom yeah. to, to do some works. Then he says, turning away so soon from the from him who called you into the grace of God to a different gospel. So the main gospel is the gospel of grace. Yeah. The gospel of grace. But now there is another gospel. So any other gospel is a gospel that does not uh, propagate the grace of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is so unique about grace? I like asking this question. <laughs> the uniqueness about grace mm. is accepting to be perfected by God himself. Mm-hmm. That's the uniqueness of it. Wow. The, the biggest problem is we want to perfect ourselves. Mm-hmm. But we have, uh, we have been invited into, into this wedding feast mm-hmm. so we can make merry. Now, Unapata kuna mtu ame invitiwa mahali na tata na kukuja kudecorate. But the place is already decorated. <laughs> so the uniqueness with this thing is that you have been called only to make merry with the king. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you've used a good example of a, of a wedding. Mm-hmm. You know, many people uh, are invited for the wedding. And uh, when they come in the morning, they want to, what can I, what can I help? Yeah. If you wanted to really help, you would have come on Saturday, on, on Friday. The wedding yeah. On Saturday. Yeah. And in the same way, there are some people who show up in the, the in salvation and they say, which is my part. Mm-hmm. And I think that is a, it's out of genuineness. Yeah. Because you also see the guys, the disciples are doing the same. Yeah. They, yeah. Ask, mm-hmm. they ask Jesus, what do we do to do the works of God? Yeah. It is in the heart of every man to do the works of sure. God. Sure. But it is unfortunately, very unfortunate, that so many people don't know what the works of God are. Yeah, yeah, it's And so that is how, now that, that uh, desire to do things for God is what makes people now get into another gospel. Mm-hmm. Because 
they get into another gospel because uh, there is someone else who comes and preaches to them and tells them you have to give this amount of money to yeah. see mm-hmm. this kind of a bless of yeah. a blessing. yeah I think it's so natural men yeah. want to do that <laughs> men wants to do that yeah. in fact the bible says that there's a way that seems to be right for a man mm-hmm. so when you look at what is in the mind of believers yeah. they might think it's right mm-hmm. but the end of it is death mm-hmm. there there it's even separation yeah. so you think through you are doing mm-hmm. it is it is the gospel yeah but now the more you do it <laughs> the more you are being separated from god mm-hmm. not like you are separated because you're not born again but in your mind because the moment you are trying to do you'll be like well maybe i have done it the way it should, it should it be done mm-hmm. then when that mind comes into your mind it, when you begin to think of that yeah. then you are conscious of how god is angry with you yeah. so that's the separation mm-hmm. so there's a way that seems to be right according to its right to do and by the way it's not wrong to do yes but when you do it <laughs> you will find yourself being like why anyway god is angry with me because you're doing it with the, the wrong motive yeah you're doing it with the wrong motive so how should we do or what or what is the right motive of doing things of god? <laughs> the right motive of doing things of god is at first receiving him listen from him then let god work through you mm-hmm. let him direct you what to do but the best part the best part of god is you receiving okay. not you doing wow yeah So God la- la- loves it more when I learn to receive from him. Yeah, he loves it more. Mm, not no. when I'm giving. Him. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and so, then, uh, then I remember we said mm-hmm. uh, in verse 7 which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and I it's you that said you are with Ian also. Yeah. But you say that uh, one of the characteristics to know another gospel mm-hmm. is that it troubles Yeah, yeah yeah maybe for the sake of those who didn't get up time to watch that mm-hmm. maybe you can say a little bit about that yeah you know it troubles me <laughs> it will unsettle you mm-hmm. you are certain that you are going to heaven mm-hmm. but another gospel comes and tells you you can't make it you mm-hmm. can't make it so you now <laughs> your mind is corrupted okay. and uh, the another gospel another thing that you will do another gospel will postpone your your blessings mm-hmm. another gospel will tell you futuristic things mm-hmm. it won't tell you what has already been done mm-hmm. it will tell you what god will do mm-hmm. like for example as we said they will begin to tell you god will bless you mm-hmm. but in real sense god has already blessed you mm-hmm. they will tell you god will heal you mm-hmm. but in real sense god has healed you mm-hmm. and sometimes maybe someone might think now I'm still sick but you're telling me God has healed me. Mm-hmm. Now you realize this thing is not about a, a feeling. Now the truth is that you are healed because truth is older than feeling. Oh, wow. So <laughs> That's okay. truth is older than feeling. Mm-hmm. Now you can feel sick but the truth is by his stripes you are healed. So all all you now, all, now uh, wait a minute. How can you convince someone yeah. he has a headache <laughs> and he feels like he's going to die in the next 25 seconds or mm-hmm. 23 and a half seconds and you are telling this person that you are healed yeah. how 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 do you convince that person there's a question i, I usually love asking people mm-hmm. like do you feel you are here <laughs> in real sense you have you have your hair yeah. you don't feel it mm-hmm. so the truth is even if you are here you can't feel it the truth is that you have that hair you can't change that fact mm. the truth is you have it mm. so it's the same same thing you might be feeling sick but the feeling can't can't change the fact that mm. you are the, the truth is that you are healed yeah so the truth when you convince this person that what you are feeling is just will just pass away the bible says all things shall pass away mm. but the word of god shall remain it mm. means even that feeling will pass away because mm. feelings is not the word of god wow So the truth we remain the word and the word says you are healed. Wow. The moment he understands that then he will be certain. Wow. Yeah. So so the gospel settles us in the in the, yeah. in the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, reality. Yeah. Reality. The, yeah, Because sure. Someone will tell you mm-hmm. Freddy, that uh, uh, going back to that person who's mm-hmm. going, feeling like he's going to die in the ne- next 23 uh, minutes mm-hmm. and 5 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to die. Mm-hmm. And uh, he feels like when you tell them that you are healed mm-hmm. or you are healed mm-hmm. in Christ Jesus. The first question that comes to their mind is that Freddy, 
you're denying reality. Yeah. <laughs> so according to the gospel, mm-hmm. I, 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 I believe that uh, this another gospel has its own reality. Yeah, yeah. And the true gospel has its own reality. Sure, sure. So what is the reality of the gospel and what is the reality of another gospel mm-hmm. and which reality should we live by? We should live by the reality of the gospel mm-hmm. because the gospel is Jesus Christ and it's through Jesus Christ all things were created. Mm-hmm. So even this, these, these things that you are calling new reality, it is not the original. The original reality is the word of God mm-hmm. because they also came from him. It's just that they misunderstood him and they had brought out something that looks like it is the truth, but it's not the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So reality is... When uh, you are sick, you say, I am healed. I am healed. So that is the reality. <laughs> In fact, the Bible says, none in Zion shall, shall say, say, I am sick. sick. Wow. He didn't say, none in Zion shall say, I feel sick. <laughs> the feeling is there. <laughs> but the truth is that you are healed. So you remain adamant. You remain strong yeah, to, the, yeah. to the reality. You remain strong. To the reality. Yeah. Wow. Because most people, when they talk about reality, they think like reality mm-hmm. is the the normal way of life. Yeah, yeah. And they call this world the real world. Mm-hmm. But according to the gospel, as you've said, the real is not what we see with our optical eyes. Yeah, this yeah, eyes. yeah. It's not what we feel. Mm-hmm. The real is not what we touch. Yeah. The real is not what we see. Mm-hmm. The real is the truth that is in Christ. Yeah. And that yeah. is the reality which is for eternity. Sure. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. That, that reminds me of this verse. Mm-hmm where the Bible says that the things that are are seen, they are temporal. Uh-huh, so yeah, if uh-huh. you can see a, a, a sickness, if it's, you can relate with a sickness mm-hmm, in the yeah, physical, mm-hmm. it is temporal. Yeah, it's temporal. Anything you can see, it's temporal. Even these cameras. They are temporal. They can change. These body cameras, <laughs> yeah, it's temporal. As long as I can see it from my eye, yeah, it's yeah. temporal. Mm-hmm. But the unseen realities mm-hmm. uh, are eternal. Yeah. So yeah. in eternity, in the et- in the eternal realm, mm-hmm. uh, you have been healed. Yeah. In the eternal realm, you have been saved. Mm-hmm. In the yeah. eternal realm. So that is the work of the gospel to establish you in that. Yeah, yeah. That is the work of the gospel. Mm. Another gospel just came to interrupt, to interrupt mm. the gospel of truth. Yeah. Because God is the one who designed, as the Bible says, he made man in his own image mm. after his own likeness. Now man was made in the image of God and God wants man to live like God. Yeah. So any other thing came to interrupt what God had already mm. decided. Wow. So it's, yeah. <laughs> hey, amazing. You know, I'm beginning to see this verse 7. Mm-hmm. In a wider way, uh-huh. in Colossians chapter, maybe Colossians chapter two, Colossians chapter two verse six. There is a very powerful uh, verse there about our identity in Christ. Mm-hmm. Colossians chapter two, not Colossians. Sorry, Ephesians. Sorry, 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 sorry. Ephesians chapter two, verse six. Uh, he says that, uh, but God, who is rich in mercy, verse 4, verse 5, verse 6, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So here in verse 6, Paul uh, shows us mm-hmm. believers who are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Yeah. And I believe sitting is a sign of rest. Rest. It's a sign of rest. Yeah. Then we go to Galatians where we've read 1, 6, and 7. And he says that uh, there are some people who come to trouble you mm-hmm. or to unsettle yeah. you. So in, uh, in the revelation of Paul to the church at Ephesus, mm-hmm. he tells them that you are settled, you are at rest, you are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Yeah. But now when another gospel comes in, mm-hmm. it unsettles you yeah. from your place of rest. rest sure. I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> That's what I've just seen. <laughs> wow, it's true, by the way, mm-hmm. because you have all been called into rest. Mm-hmm. So the, 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 the biggest thing that another gospel can do is just make you worried. Mm-hmm. And in fact, Paul says, be anxious for nothing. Yeah. In the book of Philippians. Yeah, in the book of Philippians. Be anxious for nothing. Why? Because there are things, things will come, mm-hmm. but don't take their way. Mm-hmm. It's in the book of Colossians, the Bible says, do not be taken by the philosophy of this world yeah. or by things of this world, mm-hmm. which are not without Christ. Yeah. So any other thing will come and take you mm-hmm. out from the rest that you have been given by God. Okay. Yeah. So that is the unsettling. That is unsettling. 
and and uh, does it unsettle your spirit or your mind your mind because your is it's complete. Mm-hmm. The devil will play with your mind. Mm-hmm. He can't dare touch the spirit. So, so we can also say when mm-hmm. Paul is saying, "Be anxious for nothing." It's like also this anxiety is brought in by hearing the the yeah the wrong yeah gospel, yeah another yeah, gospel yeah that does not say to you mm-hmm. your reality that is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So you begin to get worried. <laughs> you begin to get trying to find solutions. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. I want us to take a short break and uh, we'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. This is the Beholders chat brought to you by the Christ Beholders. And it's right here on Wema TV. And I remind you, my name is Ben Fetcher. And I have my friend from uh, Christ Beholders, yeah. Minister Freddy. Sky Blessing. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about uh, how, how the other gospel yeah. comes and unsettles our minds. Yeah. Because God wants us to settle in the reality that is in the spirit, mm-hmm, yeah. the finished works of Christ. Yeah. But the un, the another gospel, mm-hmm. which is not another, another. <laughs> comes and troubles and unsettles us. Yeah. And that is how we have seen, according to Philippians, according to Paul writing to the Philippians, mm-hmm. that is where we get ourselves into anxiety. Yeah, anxiety. yeah. Mm-hmm. We are anxious, but he says, "Be anxious for, for nothing. nothing." But in everything through prayer and supplication, and, uh, uh, and supplication with thanksgiving, yeah, your quest known unto God. Mm-hmm. So the the issue here, the great issue of man's anxiety and all that and unsettling, is the gospel. Yeah. Wow, it's the gospel, and uh, he says now continue with verse seven. And want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Mm-hmm. So these people that comes to unsettle us and to trouble us, I'm still thinking about that word trouble. <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh-huh. uh, this one that I realized, uh-huh. you know, the devil will not appear with a, with a panga and uh-huh. begin to threaten you. Machete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the devil will do, the devil will bring some imaginations in your thoughts. Mm-hmm. The moment your mind is taken out of Christ. So even the devil can preach another gospel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can preach another gospel He's one to of you. The dogs. <laughs> He's one of the dogs. <laughs> so it begins to trouble your mind. Mm-hmm. And when it troubles your mind, you are unsettled. Mm-hmm. Now, like, for example, when Jesus was fasting, the devil came and began to ask him some questions Mm -hmm. which were questioning his identity. To unsettle him. Yeah, to unsettle him. Now the devil can come in your mind and begin to question you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He can begin to give you some... You know, the devil can bring some questions to question you. Okay, he he will question you with the facts. Mm. Which but will be like reality. not reality mm. that will take you out of Christ, mm-hmm. not even of Christ, because no one can take you out, but will take your mind. Your mind. The Bible says, Set your mind on heavenly things. Mm. So the devil will come and try to change that so that your mind can be uh, distracted, yeah, to dis- distracted to something else. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what the Bible says that you don't be toasted to and fro mm-hmm. by any other doctrine, yes. because if you're not established in the Doctrine of Christ will yeah. be toasted to and fro. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and I, I, I've realized something about the devil. I yeah. don't like studying the devil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are some people who take time and study mm-hmm. the devil. Yeah. And you wonder where they get time from. <laughs> study. Not even studied Christ. <laughs> now they want to study the devil. But there's something I've realized mm-hmm. that one of the things that the devil comes to question mm-hmm. is your identity. Yeah, your identity. And what the, the true gospel does mm-hmm. is to establish you in your identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because look at this. He comes to Jesus and tells him, if you are mm-hmm. the son of God. Yeah. 
So he comes to question his sonship. Yeah. And he wants Jesus to prove mm -hmm. that truly <laughs> he is the son of God. Yeah. And how does he want him to prove? Mm -hmm. By doing some works. Works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And you realize even for us. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, uh, for example, you may be praying for something, mm -hmm. trusting God for, for something. Mm -hmm. Then the devil comes and questions you and questions uh, your relationship with God. Nakuliza, mm -hmm. sasa wewe, kama kweli you trust in God. Mm -hmm. Do you really trust in God? Uh -huh. Do you think God really loves you? Do you mm -hmm. think God really cares for you? Uh -huh. You have slept hungry. Yeah. You have gone without uh, proper clothing. Mm -hmm. You have not paid your rent. Mm -hmm. So he wants to question you yeah. so that you can question your relationship with, with God. God. Sure. And I believe that is how the this thing we are calling another gospel comes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he tells you, uh, maybe you need to do something. You need to give you, an you, offering. Yeah, you need to na do something. Mahal, unapata, unambiwa, <laughs> <Una panda big. laughs> if you need to pay your rent, yeah. pay someone's rent so that God can see mm -hmm. you are paying yeah. someone's rent. Kama una yako. <laughs> <laughs> so he's questioning you are. Mm -hmm, you are your settlement in Christ. Yeah, so yeah. that he can uh, provoke mm -hmm. to provoke you yeah. to do something mm -hmm. to become something. Yeah. And I believe that is what the devil was doing to Jesus. Yeah. To provoke yeah. him mm -hmm. so that he can prove yeah. his sonship. Sure. How many times have believers been provoked by the enemy, by uh, by preachers, by who and who, mm -hmm. by the world? They have been provoked to prove their sonship. Yeah. yeah. And with that provocation, they end up being uh, manipulated. Yeah. They end up being uh, forced to do things mm -hmm. to prove yeah. their sonship. Yeah. I don't know how you see that. <laughs> In fact, when you listen to, to other doctrines, mm -hmm. you realize that when a minister is declaring his word, mm -hmm. he's maybe talking about Christ or talking his own problems. Mm -hmm. Because if I begin to preach to you how the devil will attack you. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the devil has already oppressed me. <laughs> yeah. So you need to do something so that you, can, you can't be oppressed. Mm -hmm. Now, the only way you can do it, it's by giving. Yeah, and now, out. yeah, now you give that minister, which is also good, but again, it's out of knowledge. Mm -hmm. You give that minister, then the devil continues oppressing you. Mm -hmm. He can't stop because you have given him a room. Mm -hmm. So he comes and, he, and uh, brings in another doctrine which looks like it has some perfection. Mm -hmm. It gives some works. Like, now if I follow this order, I will be perfect with God. I will be in a good relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But now, this is the gospel that has come with a minister, mm -hmm. a man you trust. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus Christ says, the gospel that you ought to hear is that you come as you are. You remember when Jesus didn't tell people, wachana na hiyo, kuja. He told them, leave, don't leave anything. He told them, come the way you are. Mm -hmm. Come unto me. Come unto me. Yeah. Come and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Now, the other gospel will tell you, come and do that. Then come. Mm -hmm. Come and do that. Then come. Mm -hmm. Come and do that. Then come. 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 Then when you come, when you leave that and come, you become, when you get there, you'll be worse. <laughs> because he hasn't, yeah, yeah, he, he hasn't given you a solution. He has just introduced you to another gospel, and now the devil takes advantage of it. Mm -hmm. He begins to question your mind. And when your mind is questioned, you give up, you be condemned, then you turn back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the main, the main reason why people are not, uh, are not even sure about their salvation, they're not sure even about uh, their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Some say they, they are in, they are in, Tomorrow they are out, yeah, yeah. they are in again, mm -hmm. then they are out. Mostly it's because of the gospel that they had. Yeah, yeah, mostly because of the gospel that they have had. Because there is the one gospel that will settle you yeah. with finality, mm -hmm. as yeah. our brother Jeremiah liked, <laughs> with yeah. the point of, of finality. Of finality. <laughs> and then there is this other gospel that will... Uh, it's like a bait that will mm -hmm. keep promising you. Yeah, yeah, God yeah. Is going to, mm -hmm. God is going to... God, God will give you eternal life. Mm -hmm. God will bless you. Yeah. If you pray enough, God will make you righteous. Mm -hmm. So there is no settling in that. There is no settling in that. Mm -hmm. There's another, there's a guy who was telling me <laughs> last week that mm -hmm. believe kwa mungu. Mm -hmm. 
and I was like and why are you believing? Mm-hmm. Akaniambia I'm believing because I know any day Mungu anaweza kuja because I'm afraid of going to hell. Mm-hmm. And I realized this this guy he has been established in, that, in another doctrine mm-hmm. which is not the doctrine. <laughs> that yes. yeah so he believes in God because he's afraid of going to hell. Wow. So in fact he said that mimi ninaamini tu ndio kikiumana the same side, you know. <laughs> you know, Freddy, there are so many people who live like that. Yeah, Actually, yeah. Those people, they came to to Christianity mm-hmm. because they fear hell. Yeah, because yeah. Because some, someone talked to them about hell. Yeah. But if you ask them about Christ, they don't, they don't know. know anything. They don't they, have a clue. They, they just know that Christ is the egg, is the way to uh, to kuepuka. Yeah. There are people who whose whose work is mm-hmm. to propagate and they keep telling people about about hell. Yeah. So there are so many believers that uh, still believe they got born again mm-hmm. because they fear hell. Mm-hmm, yeah. Did those people receive the true gospel as it is? They didn't receive the true gospel as it is mm-hmm. because the plan of God is not to threaten people. Yeah. If you love someone, you won't threaten him. Mm-hmm. You will show him love. Wow. That is the mind of God, mm-hmm. expressing love to people so that they can be drawn. The Bible says he draws you to himself. Mm-hmm. So it is the work of God to draw you with love, wow. not to threaten you with hell. Mm-hmm. I, I hate that doctrine. <laughs> I hate that doctrine. <laughs> There is a place I say that mm-hmm. uh, one reason I don't preach about the second coming of Christ mm-hmm. to sinners yeah. is because they don't need to hear about the second coming of Christ. Yeah, All yeah. they need to hear is the if, good news yeah, of yeah. his first coming. Yeah, yeah. What he did. What he did. Yeah. You cannot be telling people how they will go to hell mm-hmm. and you've not told them the way of escape. Yeah. And the way of escape, actually it's not the way of escape. Salvation is not about escape. Yeah, hell. yeah. Salvation is about receiving life. Mm-hmm. Okay, this another gospel tends to think like uh, it's about changing bad people to become good people. Mm, yeah. Is that the gospel? <laughs> That's not the gospel. Uh-huh. Changing bad people to become good people. The plan of God was not changing, was giving them the identity. Mm-hmm. Because in the sight of God, these people are good. Mm-hmm. The Bible says the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared yes, to all yes, men, yeah. that teaches mm-hmm. So if I come with a gospel that I'm forcing you to become good, mm. it's it's not the gospel. Mm. The gospel is come to him. When you are Yeah. Wow, wow. And uh, the seriousness of it is actually even in uh, making dead people alive, giving yeah, people yeah, who are dead. Yeah. So if you're there, you've not believed in Christ. <laughs> it's like you are dead. <laughs> you are dead. It's not like <laughs> you are dead. You are, <laughs> Not physically, you are mm-hmm. alive physically. Yeah. But uh, the death we are talking about here is the death of being separated from God. Sure. But the only solution is not in you fearing hell. Mm-hmm. It is in you hearing the gospel. Yeah. Hearing the gospel. And uh, we've seen the gospel is the gospel of God's grace. And uh, it's God's riches at Christ's expense. expense. That is to say that you expect experience the riches of God. Mm-hmm. You experience the blessings of God. You experience the wholeness, the perfection, everything that is of God and you are not the one to pay for it. Yeah. At Christ's expense. expense. Wow. So, shuguliote inafanywa na Yesu, you are invited to be a, a beneficiary. Partaker, a beneficiary. Yeah. Wow. wow. This is amazing. <laughs> It's amazing. So if anyone preaches any other gospel apart from that, mm-hmm. let him be a cast. Yeah. So that is the, the essence of the gospel. Mm-hmm. That is what now we call the grace of God. Yeah. We can talk about it forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, yeah. it will take us forever. It will take us forever. So if you are already tired with us talking about grace, we have not yet started. Up, we have not yet started. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are still scratching the surface. Yeah. So uh, verse 8 says, we are in, still in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 says, but even if we or an angel mm-hmm. from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be a curse. You know, I look at this verse. Mm-hmm. Paul is saying, if we yeah. or an, an angel. angel. Do you know how many people 
uh, if an angel appeared to them today, mm-hmm. whatever the, the angel will tell them, yeah, they do. They will take it sure. and do it. But Paul <laughs> is saying, sorry, Paul is saying, mm-hmm. even if an angel comes, yeah. an, angel, an angel, and preaches any other thing, yeah. let him be a curse. <laughs> an angel, Freddy. It is that serious. That, you know, in fact, you realize there are some there are some believers who have been who have been established in a doctrine of angels. Mm. All they know is angels. They know God sends angels. Mm-hmm. God works through angels. Mm-hmm. They forget they they are so powerful than the angels. Mm-hmm. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible calls them they calls them workers mm-hmm. who come to spirits. yeah ministering spirits. But we are sons. <laughs> wow. In fact, David asks, "What is man that you are mindful of mindful him?" Of him. Or the son of man that you visit him, you know, you uh, yeah, than Elohim. than Elohim, God himself. <laughs> God himself. Yeah. So after after a son of God is God. Mm. So angels are living down there, mm-hmm. but they are just. You know, I love the conversation that goes on in the book of Hebrews. Mm-hmm. I think it's because at Christ, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In the book of Hebrews, mm-hmm. he he asked to which of the angels yeah. did God say that today I have begotten <laughs> mm-hmm. thee? Yeah. He has never said that. He has any never angel, said that. Sure. But he has said it to Christ mm-hmm. and he has said it to us. Yeah. Because we are also born of God. We are so also, we wow. are greater than angels. Yeah. But there are people who believe in angels more than they believe in God. Mm-hmm. If an angel doesn't appear to them, they can't believe God has said you are healed. Mm-hmm. If an angel comes and says you are healed, they are like, yes. But if God says, the word of God says, they are like, they, they, they will doubt. Mm. That's another doctrine that has also unsettled people. Mm. People are still praying, waiting to see angels. Mm. But uh, I'm so sorry for them. Maybe they will, they will never see them, <laughs> even though they do appear. <laughs> angel Gabriel, angel Michael. Yeah. So he's saying, even mm-hmm. if an angel, even if, yeah. my, let's use angel Michael, mm-hmm. or mwenye tunajua anatumango sana, Angel yeah, yeah, Gabu. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Aya, Angel Gabriel appears to you and tells you, you have to do this and this for God to accept you. Mm-hmm. I will curse him. <laughs> he is already declared a curse. He's already declared a curse. I will confirm that curse. <laughs> I will confirm it. <laughs> but now this takes... So this is to say that uh, the gospel gives men boldness. Yeah. The, the, the true boldness, yeah. which is of Christ. Yeah. So he says, even if an angel comes and preaches any other gospel, mm-hmm. let him be a cast. Yeah. This is to show us how serious it is to take the gospel of grace. It is serious. Serious, serious. If God is serious about something, mm-hmm. we should also be serious about it. Yeah. Wow. Then he says, I don't know whether you have something to add on that, verse 8, where he's saying about being a cast. Yeah, I will say mm. that, you know, Paul in fact says that if we are angels, mm. so even he he says if a time comes and I change my mind and begin to declare to you another gospel, mm. I'm also included on the people who should be cast. <laughs> Paul. Apostle Paul. But we, we love it that he finished his Yeah, course. He, he finished his course, you know. <laughs> he says, if I come to you with another gospel, mm. let me be a curse. And if an angel also, yeah. let me be a curse. Mm. This is to say, the gospel that God wants it to all, only to be heard is the mm. gospel of Christ. Hakuna wow. ingine. The gospel of grace is all about that what God has done mm. for you mm. to benefit that is the gospel that God wants you to hear. That's why it's called the good news, the glad tidings. Mm. Those, those are the gospel only if they, they have those things. They don't have good news. They, they doesn't have good news. Mm. They, and it, actually, it's not just good. It is almost yeah, too good. Almost to be good. <laughs> to be true. Yeah, to be I, true. I look at Paul, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes I understand why Paul says some things. He says, in the Acts chapter 20, verse 24, mm-hmm. again, taking it up from the New King James Version, uh-huh. he says, but none of these things move, move me. me. Yeah. But do I count my life dear to myself, mm-hmm. so that I may finish my race mm-hmm. with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of, of God. God. Mm-hmm. Now, this is Paul speaking, and he says that there is a... I'm set on a course. Yeah, yeah. I am on a mission. Mm-hmm. I have an assignment. And he said that I am, so that I may finish my race. Mm-hmm. So whatever happens to me, I don't care. Yeah. But my mission and my race 
is to uh, to finish my race with joy the ministry which i received from the lord jesus christ and the ministry that paul received is to testify to the gospel of the grace of, of god. god yeah hallelujah wow so he is a testimony he is a yeah, he's yeah. a tes- testifier he is mm-hmm. a He's a uh, he's a hero. He's mm-hmm. a he's a he's a minister yeah. of the gospel of the grace of God. Yeah, and he also says that I commend you to the word of grace, mm-hmm. which has the ability to of building you mm-hmm. up yeah. and also giving you an inheritance. Yes, that is in verse thirty-two of the same. Yeah, acts. of the of the so same acts. Even if I have preached the gospel, mm-hmm. now this is the same thing that I commend you to. Yeah, At yeah. You. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and mm-hmm. to the word of His, His grace, grace, not yeah. just any other word. Yeah, yeah. Which is able to build you up. Mm-hmm. Wow, it's able to build wow. you. So it is the work of grace to build you. To mm. Wow, <laughs> to be built by the word wow. of grace. Wow. This is big. <laughs> so it is the word of his grace that builds mm-hmm. us. Yeah, yeah. So if a man gives his, himself to <clears throat> another gospel, which is not the gospel, mm-hmm. he will not be built up. Mm-mm. He won't be built up. That is why we are seeing so many believers. They have been uh, in Christianity mm-hmm. for the last 35 years. Yeah. 35 and 3 months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they're still babes. But if you ask them on the basic of salvation, mm-hmm. they don't know. Yeah. I got born again so that I'll not go to hell. That yeah. is what they will tell you. Yeah. Why? It's because they have not been exposed to the true gospel. Gospel, sure. So can that be a test? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in, in fact, in the book of First Corinthians 3.10, mm-hmm. Paul talks about the foundation. Yeah. He says, according to the grace of God, which was given to me mm-hmm. as a wise master builder, yeah. I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. Mm-hmm. You know, another gospel will give you foundations mm-hmm. in plural, foundations. Mm-hmm. But the gospel will give you one foundation. Which is Christ. Yeah. What do I mean by foundations? Mm-hmm. Another gospel will tell you, work for your sins, work, work for your sins. Mm-hmm. Now, the moment you begin working for them to stop sinning, where you are about to do away with it, you find yourself sinning again. Mm-hmm. Now you have to begin. You will never finish the foundation. Mm-hmm. You will forever remain in that foundation. You still have another foundation of maybe, let's say, tithing, all those things. When you deal with these things, then God will bless you. Mm-hmm. Those are foundations that you have been given in another doctrine. Mm-hmm. But Paul says, uh, says, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but let each one take heed how he builds on it. Mm-hmm. Verse 11, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which was laid, which is Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So we have been called into a foundation that has already been laid, which is Jesus, which Christ. Is Jesus Christ. That is the foundation mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ, is the foundation. Mm-hmm. Now, when you build your house on top of that foundation, you know, it's like this idea was thinking of Ujenka Nyumba Kamabati Kazu, Rika Foundation Kamabati, Alafu Ujenka Nyumba Yamawe Ju. It doesn't make sense. Yamabati Chini, Alafu Tenweke Yamawe Ju. <laughs> yeah, so you have to look at okay, you have to follow the foundation that has been that has been laid before, mm. and the foundation is Christ. Mm. So if there's any gospel that will point you to, to you, but then another gospel it does it points you to self, mm. and when self is involved, it will destroy everything. Mm. It doesn't point to you to what Christ has done to the foundation of Christ. It will only point you to self. Yeah. Now you have to build on the foundation of Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. The foundation of Christ. Mm-hmm. Now with that foundation is that uh, we have been established. Yeah. Been established. We have been established so in that it's foundation. Not like you're building with your own things. No. Your own ideas. Don't come with your ideas. <laughs> Idea. And now, mm, now talking about another gospel. Mm-hmm. It is in these days. I don't know whether it was in those other days, mm-hmm. but at this time when we are living, mm-hmm. we have seen so many things that are cropping up. Yeah. There are people who are talking about generational curses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are people who are talking about um, uh, redeeming your mm-hmm. firstborn yeah. sons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know all these things. Mm-hmm. There are people who are talking about uh, raising altars. Yeah. There are people who talk about uh, sowing seeds mm-hmm. yeah. to, for prosperity and so many other things. And I believe it's time now that yeah. we talk the truth head on and mm-hmm. tell people the truth yeah because many people are being misled sure what do you say about generational curses according now to the foundation which has already been mm-hmm. laid uh generational curses they might be real mm-hmm. 
Yes, they might be real to they that don't believe in Christ. Yeah. Because if you don't believe in Christ, you're not a new creation. Mm -hmm. This generation of cases can't get people who are born again. Wow. Because they have another identity. Mm -hmm. They are born again. You, you are born. Mm -hmm. But these people are born again. Mm -hmm. There's so, something extra that has happened. Yeah, the there's something extra. And the Bible calls them a new creation. Mm -hmm. He says the old is gone. The old nature is gone. The new nature has come. Now we focus with the new, mm -hmm. not the old. Wow. Now what generation of cases do... You will still see believers who think they have generational curses. I realize the problem is the mind. Mm -hmm. You know, they think they have been cursed. And the moment you have, a, you, you think you can't prosper, I promise you will never prosper. You never. If you think you are cursed, I promise you, yes, you are cursed. If you think. Yes. But if you think right, mm -hmm. then you will be free from it. According to God, a there is no curse. That a yeah that can come to a person who is in Christ. In fact, the Bible says, no weapon formed again it shall prosper. Mm -hmm. So in God, there is no curse. Mm -hmm. Even if they curse you, they can't reach you mm -hmm. because you're already blessed. Imagine imagine a human cursing God. Because you're hidden with Christ in God. You're hidden with, in Christ with God. So in God, God has to come to you. Yeah. It has come. It has to curse <laughs> uh, Christ, Christ. God. Then you. Then me. Because that is where you're up. <laughs> yeah. So it is true those who are not born again. Mm -hmm. But if you are born again, it can't work in you. Mm -hmm. It will follow them because they don't have a renewed mind. Paul mm -hmm. says that we have a renewed mind. Mm -hmm. Now, when your mind is renewed to the reality of the truth, mm -hmm. you, you can't operate in generational cases. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And to add to that, mm -hmm. in, in Galatians uh, chapter 3 from the verse 13, uh -huh. Paul tells us that uh, Christ has been made a curse. Yeah, yeah, for us, yeah, yeah. That we might receive the blessings. Mm -hmm. So we are not under any curse. So you believer that is watching us tonight, mm -hmm. you should know this and it should, it should be established in your heart. And this is now the purpose of the gospel, yeah. the true gospel, to establish you in mm -hmm. your new identity. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about new creation. So there are so many churches that. And so many believers, let me say so many believers, mm -hmm. that know much about generational curses, yeah, but yeah. they don't know about the new creation. Sure. And that is error. That is has, error. It was not supposed to be so. Yeah. And when you are establishing the reality of who you are in Christ as a new creation, there are so many things that you will drop, like generational curses. Mm -hmm. The worry mm -hmm. is this, that the propagators of these things, do you know, at the end... What they want mm -hmm. is to draw men to themselves yeah. so that they can break curses for them. Yeah. And at the end, they get some, yeah. some money. Yeah. Because you come to, my, to me for prayers so mm -hmm. that I can break generational curses. And there are some generational curses that are <laughs> called serious than the others. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you need to come with a big offering. I pray for you. I cast out curses. I don't know how you cast out curses. <laughs> then you, you give an offering, a yeah. sacrifice. Then you are set free. So at the end of the day, what is driving the another gospel mm -hmm. is human's belly. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says that they have made their God their bellies. Mm -hmm. Their bellies have become their God. Yeah, yeah. So because I want to, I want to manipulate you. Mm -hmm. I must come up with something mm -hmm. that will look like uh, the gospel. Yeah, that is not mm -hmm. that will attract people. You yeah, know, like yeah. in this Nairobi, there are so many people. Who think they are cast? Yeah, sure. Because they have been working in Nairobi, mm -hmm. they have been working in other cities all yeah, over the yeah. world. Mm -hmm. and they think, but this is a problem with Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they think they are cast. Yeah, most especially Africa. Yeah, things like uh, things like redeeming your firstborns, things like uh, uh, separating yourself from mm -hmm. what your family does, separating yourself from. Some things are from Nigeria. Separating <laughs> yourself from the village. My good friend, you are in Christ. Yeah. And you must be established in Christ. Sure. And uh, now, as we conclude, mm -hmm. I want you to give the, the parting shot. Uh, what I will say is that uh, make sure you hear right. Mm -hmm. You know, when Jesus Christ was talking to people, he used to tell them, Mind how you hear. Mm. Hear right. Mm. So when you listen the gospel, when you hear, in fact, there's another guy who was saying that when I heard God, I spoke to God mm. and God answered. Mm. Why? Because God, I heard him talking. So I listened what he said. Yeah. And because I listened to him, then I spoke mm. and he heard me. Wow. So make sure you hear the right doctrine. Mm. You will be out of trouble. <laughs> yeah.
Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, thank uh, you. The Beholders Chat. And my viewers, listen. Don't listen to everyone. Listen to the to Christ. Yeah. Even if I, Ben Fletcher, mm-hmm. come and tell you something else and preach to you what I've not preached to you before, let me be a cast. <laughs> And yeah. let it be a double cast. <laughs> because I want you to be established in your identity in Christ. You're not cast. You don't need to give any offering to become anything to God. Yeah. He has made you. Wow. Why do we give? We give because we are celebrating what he has made us. Wow. What he has blessed us. Sure. You are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Mm-hmm. You, don't give even, you don't need to give even a coin to, to be blessed. You don't need anything for God to do to you anything because he has done everything for you. All that you need is to be settled in Christ wow. and anything that comes to unsettle you and to stir you up and to trouble you from the rest that is in Christ, that is another gospel. So as you conclude, beware of dogs. dogs. <laughs> you are blessed. This has been uh, this has been the Beholder's Chat and my name is Ben Fetcher with my good brother, Freddy Sky. Bless, Bless you. And we call you blessed because in Christ you are blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.